You like cosmetics? Well, we got an episode for you guys today with Mr. Jeffrey Starr. So there is, you, <laughs> you the like, boys are checking like, a lot of boxes. You like gays? Perfect. Jeffrey Starr is coming up shortly. <laughs> and here it is. It's beautiful. You did not make the episode. Are you, um, was that a, was that a, um, a political stance not making the episode or were you up to something? No, there's some values that I have that I like to stand firm on and no, I'm fucking around. So I missed the Jeffrey Star. So for everybody out there listening, obviously I've been playing a nice little, nice little angle out there on the internet that like I drew a line in the sand with the Jeffrey Star thing. Your boy, we're, we're about to be in Cabo in like what, 48 hours, Taylor. I was yeah. having a debacle with my past. Hi everyone. It's me again. And Squish Gang is present. And shout out to my friend Emma that thought I was always pointing in the wrong direction on purpose. And I'm not. And today, we're going to talk about Jeffree Star's Republican arc. (laughs) Because, you know, having a little fun, silly, goof-gaff type video once in a while is kind of iconic once in a while. Yup. We're going to talk about the recent interviews that Jeffree Star did and kind of the weird, I'm going to start targeting non-binary people because I'm bored type deal and how conservatives love him because he's realistic. Mm. But first, links, socials, uh, Amazon, Patreon, ways to support the channel all down below, including affiliate links to like my makeup and stuff like that and any jewelry that I have once in a while. Y'all, I'm swamped. I have a full-time unpaid internship, then I have this, then I have another job, and then I have two classes a week and that are three hours long each. And I'm trying to also not have my friends abandon me because I never talk to them ever. That wouldn't happen, but like, you know what I mean? You're like, I kind of want to like, because when you're an extrovert, it's, ext- it's extrovert things, okay? Now, also, also, thank you to my patrons. I don't know why I sing everything now. Names on the screen. Merci. Three parts of the video today. Part one, we're going through the interviews. And then part two, we're going to do Jeffree Star's persona and the history of androgyny. Part three, conservative embrace of figureheads and Jeffree's responses. Because those two things kind of have to intertwine just based on the essay type way that I wrote it. Sue me, okay? So let's get right into it. Part one, going through the interview. So I was being a silly little goose on Twitter, and then I saw my timeline blowing up about, I was on my little timeline looking at jelly bean seasickness, and all of a sudden there was a bunch of people being like, man, Jefferina Sarlongo has been on an interview. I'm trying to think of as many like Jeffree Star names as I could think of, talking about non-binary people. And how he doesn't believe in the existence of them. He said, what? Uh, And I quote, what the F is a they? Yeah. So I'll put the clip in here. If if your daughter looks like a tomboy, it doesn't mean she wants to be a boy. It means she wants to explore her creativity and you should let her be her. Yeah, that's like a hard thing. Like like the transgender thing is like, I just don't understand it. Yeah. So I just like... I do my best to be like, hey, people do whatever they want, but I, they say like the brain's not developed. There's so many layers. There's so many layers, yes. all of you fucking hate it. (laughs) No, it's just crazy. It's just- No, it's mentally complicated because our culture has made it more complicated. Yeah. That's the problem. It seems like, yeah, it definitely seems that way because the brain's not developed until 25. I'm not into all the other, I think. What other shit? The they and them. Yeah. And all that extra. Shit that we added during the pandemic because everyone mm. was so bored on their f-ing houses. They just started to make up more sh- and more, more shit. Stuff, more stuff. Yeah. That's where the like, conservatives like me because I'm just real. So I found the full podcast that this clip is from. Okay. And it came out on February 14th, 2023. So on Valentine's Day, we got blessed with the existence of Jeffree Star continued prejudice. And was I surprised? No. Because I think we seem to have forgotten Jeffree Star posing with the Confederate flag and the Nazi stuff and the racist stuff and the, you know, quote unquote, socially conser- uh, socially democratic, fiscally conservative type vibe that he goes for where he's just like, um, I guess the right to do what I want, but I hate poor people. So... 
This was on the Busting with the Boys podcast, which seems to be affiliated with Barstool Sports, which is owned by David Portnussy, who is our, or Dave Portnoy. <laughs> Dave Portnoy, who's like also Bad News Bears. So the podcast was titled Jeffree Star and Taylor <laughs> Lewin? Lewan? Uh, address the rumors about them dating and the trip to Wyoming. This is because Jeffree Star took this picture with a mystery football person and then took this picture with Taylor Lewan, Lewan, whatever. Um, they're obviously not the same person, though. So that means nothing. So I don't even know what that was getting. That was just trying to stir drama because he was bored. Which, to stir drama, like, you know, I'm going to release my palette on the same day as somebody else. Like, shade tea. Like, that's fun, you know? that I think that's why Mascara Gate was so successful, like, for content creators. Because we liked having something silly to talk about. You know? Like, someone... Like, let's say, like, the allegations of, like, Michaela forcing her, like, Boston accent. That's, like, fun. But, like, I hate marginalized people. Like, can we not do that? Do you have a face full of acne and you just can't seem to figure out how to cover it up? I'm sure we all know why we've all gathered here today. I've been able to trick people into thinking I have no acne at all with these three products. It's the month of love, bitches! First, Exuvian's Radiance Serum. This stuff is sticky as hell, and that's what you need for your foundation to stay. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not fucking around on Valentine's Day, okay? Next, Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This stuff is the bomb. If you're a member of the Bad Bitch Beauty Boot Camp, strap the fuck up and get ready to get uncomfortable with this one. And third, the NARS Matte Concealer and a concealer brush. You're gonna start laying that eyeshadow on top. Okay? Take your concealer brush with the concealer and cover up all the acne. Oh, I'm sorry, what? What acne? Go to part two. Hey guys, we're going in with the tight contour. Hey guys, so we're going in with this telescopic mascara and are you freaking kidding me right now? This looks like falsies. Hey guys, today we're going in with this. I think we got a little real again infallible eyeliner. We're just going to see what this guy. Are you guys seeing this? Come on, this might be my new wedding eyeliner. The podcast goes through many different topics, including Jeffree Star's history, opinions, life changes, and also touches on some other controversies. First couple of po uh, parts of the podcast is the host talking about bro stuff, um, sport things, the Super Bowl, that kind of stuff. So I kind of skipped over that. Uh, it was mostly then they talked about Jeffree Star being really famous and how it was going to be like a huge deal for them. I also forgot that I was going to talk about David po Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy is kind of a POS. He kind of sucks butts because of other allegations that he has. But he also is so hungry, so I'm not going to say anything. Next thing. Okay, so first couple of parts, bro stuff, like I mentioned, it was supposed to talk about football or whatever, and then it gets to how Jeffree Star's really famous, this is a huge deal for them. And then that one of the hosts was not there because of something to do with getting a passport. Then also, apparently, they, like, this whole, like, this picture that originally had come out that didn't have really th anything to do with it, but then, like, this picture that's, like, obviously not the same person, this was them queerbaiting as podcast promotion. Yay! I love when people pretend to be gay for money. Obviously, that's a joke. That's absolutely, oh my God. Well, I actually know my agent, mm -hmm. my agent was, uh, I was on the phone with him because once you and I started talking and there was a possibility you're coming on the show, it's a big deal. And I was talking to him. He says, I have another player who was in a similar boat. People were tagging him and he calls him at 1 a.m. Fucking pissed. Why? Like, why the fuck is this dude doing this? I'm not like that. Blah, blah, blah. All this shit. And then the next day, he sends him my tweets. Yeah. Of like, listen, just play into it. Have fun and get over it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like, there's a level of like, listen, like, people take themselves a little too seriously. They do. That's, yeah, and, that's yeah, what, yeah. and that's what happens. So, it's, if anything, this is going to be really good for the NFL and for us. It is. Yes. Yeah. You, we're mending bridges. Maybe I'll have my own seat at the... Possibly. One of the arenas. Football is one of the more homophobic sports. See, that's what I heard, but I've been to so many games and I've hung out with a lot of people and I've never had that experience. It's more in the locker room. Uh, yeah, because you do, you try lot. to do a couple things. <laughs> you try to do a couple things to mess with dudes. Hey, hey, 
and about oh, that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, they get frustrated. I but, know because they, yeah, that's <laughs> it's just that's some psychological shit. Yeah, it's on them. Yeah, that's actually you can joke and laugh and normal. You're just a normal person. So if you get yeah. really weird or insecure or you take offense, there's some deep rooted things that they haven't dealt with. Yeah, you, so you think those individuals are fighting their sexuality? Oh my god, demonic. That's got to be a tough life to live to not live your true They're self. They're just fighting to suck a dick and they won't do it. It's like, try it, move on. Yeah. Gotta try everything twice in life. Like, every, take a shot every time Jeffree Star somehow becomes more insufferable and then die of alcohol poison. <laughs> I'm going to be editing out so many, <laughs> like, like, deep sighs for this whole thing. So they discussed sexuality in football, given, you know, Jeffree Star recently stirring drama with him hooking up with football players because basketball players, I guess, was causing too much red tape for him because of that Andre guy, maybe. So they were talking about how, like, football is often, like, really homophobic and then how, like, Jeffree Star's picture was resulting in, like, a lot of people getting mad uh, and people worry about being seen as, like, possibly being gay by people trying to guess who it was. So then there are more conversations about sexuality and stuff. And then we get to the infamous clip that I had played before talking about like, ooh, what is with me? Which, you know, Jeffree Star has literally like explained that they're like an alien before. Like Jeffree Star's like said and acted in ways that were far more confusing than like, hey, can I go by they, them? Like that's, it's not that deep. But alas, here Jeffrey is saying that labels have come out of the pandemic because everyone was bored in their houses. And one thing that I find interesting, and a lot of people brought this up on Twitter and stuff like that, is that Jeffree Star before described himself as like extraterrestrial or like a diva or like kind of like this like genderless type thing. He had made himself look and present in a way that does not really fall into like the like this is a man or this is a woman category, which is what a lot of like non-binary people kind of want to like emulate sometimes i'm also not speaking for like all the non-binary people in general they're often just rejecting the gender spectrum as a whole and that's slay like you know i like i what i do for my you know mental health and for my decency is when someone says i want to go by they i go okay and that is what i will call you and then even if later they go mm, never mind i want to go by she i go oh slay she done like I just don't dwell on it because it's not my business and it's not my process and it's pretty easy to do that actually try it then maybe people will actually like you instead of being like users and like snakes maybe like genuine people will actually like you when you decide that hatred isn't your personality trait hmm. maybe a good time to try it anyways he then states that conservatives like him because he keeps it real and I truly guarantee that the group of people that probably needed open heart surgeries after the stress they put themselves in because Harry Styles wore a dress is not into the guy that wears dresses and has like blowjob, cuddlingus, themed makeup products. First of all, are we really going to pretend that this man doesn't look stupid as hell in that ridiculous outfit? The problem here is not that it's womanly. I've never seen a woman dress like that or any human. If my wife walked into the room wearing that, I would immediately stage an intervention, assuming that she's high on heroin. Second, I want you to imagine something for a moment. Just imagine what would happen if a white conservative male celebrity, what few exist, were to issue a clap back to a black liberal woman with a picture of himself eating a banana. Imagine how that would be received. Imagine what assumptions would be made. You know, we're at a point right now where you can simply move your fingers a certain way. You can make a, a, a circle with your index and thumb like this, and you'll be accused of sending racist messages. Right now, I'm, I'm sending a racist message, supposedly. Almost anything is a racist dog whistle these days. So how is this picture of a guy eating a banana meant as a diss to a black woman not a racist dog whistle? Now, to be clear, I don't actually think that Harry Styles meant it that way. Um, I don't really want to speculate on what he's doing with that banana on camera, much less what he'll do with it off camera. But we all know damn well what kinds of speculation the media would be doing if the politics were reversed here. 
the explosions of outrage would be nuclear. So this had actually happened after I had filmed, and I wanted to add this in because just know that I had said all of this before this tweet had come out. Anyways, as predicted, the conservatives do not like Jeffree Star. Just another example of him lying, but we're not that surprised. But yeah, you see, I wanted to put this in after we had already seen a clip of our bestie Matt Walsh really not liking people that dress like Jeffree Star and act like Jeffree Star and associate with people like Jeffree Star. So this is yet another example of people kind of just shooting themselves in the foot for, I would assume, attention or something. Kind of like YDHB's recent grift. But we'll see what happens with all of this as time progresses. But to what I understand, Jeffree's not really going to be going anywhere with this. And I assume he was just kind of separating himself from socialists and all that kind of stuff because that was kind of a lot of maybe his old audience and he's mad at them for ditching him or something along those lines. But yeah, I just wanted to add this in because, you know, I think this is a really important part of the story and kind of just shows that sometimes I'm kind of right about the things that I talk about. Anyways, back to the video. The people that say kids knowing that gay people are a thing before they're like 18 is like ruining their minds. I'm pretty sure they're not into your agenda. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be that keen on you, actually. <laughs> so Jeffree Star tweeted something. This is my iPad pinch of like zooming in because I like to suffer. Jeffree Star says, so somebody, somebody had tweeted... Um, sis, you identify as an alien at one point. I don't know if they, them is that hard to get. It's what I was saying, right? It's not that difficult. Uh, I think what you're going for, um, was more difficult, I'd say. Then he says, alien is a noun. And clearly I was being sarcastic when I said that. So then why did you have multiple themed photo shoots, an entire collection? And that is like a huge proponent of your personality for like a really long time. That seems like a lot of investment. For like an off sarcastic comment. That's just me. If I'm sarcastic, it's like one comment and then I kind of forget about it. You know, like I don't like make it my whole personality and then like make a whole collection on it and do campaigns and then kind of carry that theme over into like other stuff. You know, like that's weird. But, you know, hmm. I honestly feel bad for how stupid some of these people are. I pray for them daily. Or you can mind your own business and then you don't have to pray for them every day. And you can spend more time trying to save the brand that you have that you're constantly inflating the sales of, even though it has obviously greatly declined, but you blame it on everything except for the fact that you're a terrible person. I think my favorite thing with Jeffree Star saying that conservatives like him because he keeps it real implies that those who are not conservative cannot live in any sort of scope of reality, despite the fact that there are seemingly infinite arguments that are not even constructed in any sort of logical or reasonable way. And before somebody goes, well, how do you say that without referencing something? So there's like when you go down, right? The video, there's like the there's like the title and there's like the description, blah, blah, blah. There's gonna be a little button that says Mika's rhetoric on it, right? In the little channel square. You're gonna click on that, okay? And then you're gonna go through the videos and pick pretty much any other one. Anything to do with like, cause there's a Steven Crowder video, there's a Role Models video, there's the, um, there's like the uh, Leftovers podcast videos, there's the Andrew Tate stuff, there's the Ben Chapipo type dealio stuff, there's the iDub stuff, there's the 2016 YouTube stuff. Take one of those. Huge selection, the rhetoric up, the whole playlist, pretty much. Then you're going to take that and then you're going to look at my examples because I don't have time for that right now. Anyway, we're on a rant about OnlyFans where Jeffree Star was confused as to why people would pay for online sex work as if not every single thing that Jeffree Star has ever done has had to be for money. Like he was talking about the yaks, right? And he was like, oh, I wanted them as little pets, but then I realized I need to make money off of it. Do you good, know what that is? Good ones. Do you know what Google? Pop that up. Yeah. He's on OnlyFans right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, you said you're not on OnlyFans. Okay. He, why would he be on OnlyFans if you're not on there? Are any of you actually subscribed to girls on there and it actually is usable or is it all a scam? I don't have an OnlyFans account. Someone's lying. <laughs> it's, a, it's a scam? 
I just don't like, I don't know if you want to get off. Why do I want to follow a creator and like pay them money and do all these things? Like, it's just so. It's like cameo meets porn, right? That's like the whole, the whole idea behind it. So last year they offered me a lot of money and I was going to do it. We shot some content and then I was like, eh, this is not for me. Like, I don't need the money. (laughs) No. Yeah. Listen, we know. Yeah. Another thing to do. And I was like, no, that's not the route we're going. But if you're going to do it anyway and you're comfortable, why not? Like if you're gonna fuck, yeah, you don't mind being viewed. Some fucking. great photos on my phone. We're in private jets, sucking dick, and all this stuff, and it was great fun. Thanks for taking those. Um, but <laughs> you know, yeah, at perfect lighting. That's, you know, yeah, you do a phenomenal job with lighting. <laughs> it would have been the best. If we had now. an extra one, that'd be nice. Make sure of all this. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> so you do all this content. You're on jets. We're sucking dick. Yeah. We're having a great time. Yeah. Penises are flying everywhere. everywhere. And you think to yourself, I don't want to do OnlyFans anymore. But then, like, in essentially the same breath is like, oh, I'm so insanely rich. I don't have to think about money. So it's like you can't have anything that's not monetized. So then why are you confused about paying for sex work? It should always be paid for, I'd actually say, I think. So that was stupid. But anyways. Jeffree Star then continues on a rant, and he always goes on that he was, like, the first boy in makeup and he was the first to have the best brand he, he talked like he had the only liquid lipstick that like ever exists um he, who cares i don't even like liquid lipstick i think it's kind of annoying that's why my lips are always so shiny because i'm just not a liquid lipstick yeah yeah and it's the same spiel he always tries to do which this 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 idea and i'll put the clip in as well yeah um well, how did you start your beauty empire Ooh, so I did music for a long time. Yes. I was on now my- you say, what kind of music did you do? So I was going to go to college to be a psychologist. Yeah. And then MySpace happened and I created a character and I it went really big and viral before viral was a word. Mm-hmm. And I was like the first person to me, I, I call it me and Paris Hilton. We capitalized way back in the day on how to make money off of being a personality from internet and TV. Now, were you friends with Paris Hilton at this yeah. time? Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Still to this day, she's always been a real really? one. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. And I would love to see a photo of you two together. There's some on there. Yeah. Google. There's some Do you good, know what that is? Good ones. Do you know what Google? Pop that up. This idea of like, I'm the first and best at everything. This becomes relevant to like my thesis as we go down the line. Also said like his lipstick is the best formula on the market. And he's like pitching this to somebody who knows nothing about makeup. So this guy's just like eating it up because like he has no idea what the hell he's talking about. It was such a weird dynamic. And I think it was just because the other guy knows how big the beauty community is. So even if none of the bros watch it, we're going to find it, which we did. But I'm hoping that I can show it to you so you don't have to watch it because it was really boring. I watched it at like 2.4 times speed, I think, like the first time. And then I rewatched the parts that I had to like actually pay attention to. More at like 1.6, I think. So just more of the same for this Jeffree Star interview. It's always the same stuff. I invented everything. Nobody's better than me. I'm the best one. Everyone's a snake. Everyone who's ever done anything bad. Um, I The only things I've done bad are the things I've had to admit to on the internet because people were berating me. But anything else, um, I didn't, even though other people have proved it. And then obviously like weird sexual innuendos and comments and stuff that make me super uncomfortable. And then he's like stroking his ego the whole time, right? I'm yet to see an interview where he's actually challenged in any way, at least in any way that's like actually meaningful. So yeah, I'd love to see that someday, to be honest. The only time I've ever seen him even kind of challenged was like when he was talking about Dobby Vanity, like Chris Hansen, but like Chris Hansen's also a hack. So like, I want something like reputable, right? To like actually do that, but alas. So part two, Jeffree Star's persona in the history of androgyny, okay? So Jeffree Star's entire persona, for as long as I can remember, has been based on someone who looks and acts outrageous, right? And kind of tows the line or tows, tows the line of like gender and things like that. Even thinking about the collections released by Jeffree Star, right? One was literally called androgyny. So this concept of androgyny or existing in a sort of neutral gender position makes sense to him. Years and years and years ago where like this was like, these conversations were not nearly as populated online. But then once they are super populated online, it's too difficult to conceptualize like the next step up kind of. And like, I know I'm kind of oversimplifying it, but it's just because like, I'm trying to show like how the connection could be made like really easily. 
at least like in his mind, you know, to like the non-binary stuff. And he just doesn't understand it. Right. So he had collections like androgyny and alien that had like these kind of gender towing, uh, gender towing kind of themes and stuff like that. But then now that like he lives in like a conservative place and he wants to be into guns, he's trying to, you know, appeal to the alt right, I guess, or the right wing at least, and alt right probably more down the line, so that he can pose in front of his, he can you know crack out. Oh, there's no cracks in my fingers. He could crack out the old Confederate flag out of the closet, yeehaw, and get the. <laughs> And get the gun out. Yeah. Um, doodly, doodly, doodly. So you would think of someone who has like played with gender and presentation throughout all of their career would have like pennies of critical thought. But then Jeffree Star ceases, never ceases to disappoint. So again, you know, I don't own any of his makeup anymore. I had the conspiracy palette that I had to gash out with a brush because the pigment was so pressed in. Which I paid twenty dollars Canadian for, like after like whatever, is like infinitely higher quality than my Jeffree Star palette was. My favorite formula is actually this one. Kaleidos, please work with me. And this is still thirty percent less than a Jeffree Star palette. I'd say twenty percent less. And this is like a small indie brand in comparison, right? So, especially when I got it, so. Anyways, so I actually think that this whole ordeal with like trying to appeal to the right wing and this conservative kind of leaning and despite his like, you know, presentation and whatever, I think is him trying to like be the first at something again, because that's what a lot of his career has been. And that's the only thing he can truly credit himself for. And that's why every single chance he has to talk about it, he does. I was the first in makeup. I was the first in doing music. I was the first in the liquid lipstick game. I was the first in this, the first in that, first in whatever. I think he's trying to trend set again with like this kind of like conservative makeup type thing. Cause and and before people go like that's such a weird thing to equate or whatever. Amanda Ensing, if anybody remembers who that is, uh tried to do that, but then like flopped. Because she was stupid. <laughs> but um, tried that. And I do not think she has. But like she doesn't have the money. The status. Or like the business savvy. That like Jeffree Star has. So I think Jeffree Star saw that. And played it out. To see like how she would do. And I think he's like in the back of his mind. Like tweaking. Like what she was positioning. What her positions politically were. How they aligned with the makeup. And what the steps were. And is trying to figure out where she went wrong to carry out his own like yeehaw America empire. And this is also given that I find he always tries to veer away from the acceptable. And now that like people are more accepting of social justice and things like that. And despite what you want to say about like online debates and things like that and how the right wing seems so popular and we can't escape it, blah, blah, blah. It's still predominantly in like normal people who aren't like chronically online uh, to be swaying the other way. At least in, like, Canada and things like that. It's just some people are just louder and the internet is allowing them to be louder. But statistically, that is not the case. So I think it's because now that, like, the thing that Jeffrey was doing before is, like, not niche, he's, sl he's sliding the other way because that's niche, right? And then he responds to a certain extent. Stories, we'll talk about that in part three. And Jeffrey does a lot of this given his personality of like trying to throw anything in the wall and see if it sticks. So he's again, he's just putting out outrage bait to kind of see where he can lean into to be the new trendsetter yet again. So this is something he's done his entire career, like I said. And I think it's now that he was before how he was someone who was loud, proud and androgynous. He needs to be someone who's like loud, proud, lady looking, but I'm a man. I'm a he. I'm a, I don't prescribe to none of that mentally ill stuff, you know, like that kind of thing. And I think the new niche is going to be like, all right, I think we're going to get back there. And I'll be here with this clip if I am right. Tinfoil hat applied. Do not sue me. This is alleged. Hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft. Hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft. Please do not sue me. This is just my thoughts. This is what I'm thinking. Next part of the video. So part three, conservative embrace of figureheads and Jeffree Star's responses. There's been criticism of conservatives for a long time. 
that they like lack diversity in the representation. So I've noticed in the past couple of years, and I think this has like been a big part of like daily the Daily Wire's appeal. I think that's why they're so successful because the main crux that people have been doing is that they're speaking on behalf of groups that they do not represent, right? So conservatives uh, in politics or whatever, <sighs> mostly old white guys look like Mitch McCussy. Everything's gone ussy at the end. Mitch McCockroach, guy who looks like a rubber chicken, kind of, you know, or like that thing from Star Wars. Anyways, he, <laughs> they all kind of like tend to look like, you know, super geriatric old white dudes, right? So when people were kind of criticizing them, they said, well, how can these like old white guys speak on behalf of like the black community, the LGBTQIA plus community? Uh, the, even because uh, a lot of them were anti-Semitic, the Jewish community, et cetera, right? And I think what they've been doing is in order to avoid this, they've picked a select few figureheads, right? And marginalized people to pilot topics. That's why Kanye or Ye or whatever had his tour to conservative land, right? So some try to argue against this saying things like someone like me cannot speak on behalf of issues, someone, let's say, like the black community with Candace Owens, while that is true to a certain extent, because obviously, like, I don't have that knowledge or that experience, simply looking at majority and, like, numerical statistics, it can be shown that, like, the black community, like, primarily votes Democrat, for example. And Candace will try to say things like, oh, well, that's because they're scared or whatever, but then is speaking on behalf of, like, components that she cannot truly address and just disavows you know, logic in that way. You know, this is the same person that reacts to Kakata by going. Like, literally, like, not doing anything of actual anything. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the thing that you could do to, like, blow up a lot of these, like, alt-righty conservative arguments is, like, literally, like, the easiest search ever. Like, read one book in history, and you've you've got them. You know, that your gotcha moment's going to come in. <laughs> so it's Jeffrey in the interview says it takes someone like me to say it, which is presenting that exact phenomenon of that figurehead placement to speak on behalf. Right. Because they got a black woman. They have a black man. Okay, Candace Owens and yay. Right. We got that. We got a Jewish man. We got Bench Peepo. We got <laughs> Canadian. I'm just kidding. Um, We have well, we have Stephen. Stephen Crowder is your is your more standard type. Right. Um, who else is there? There's the gay one. There's a conservative who's homosexual and that's like his whole thing. And he like, I think he was on Fox and he used to be a Democrat and he moved over. I think that's the same guy. And it's bothering me that I can't remember what his name is. But there's that guy too, right? So now they, and they also, oh my God, Blair White, a doy, trans woman. And now their new thing, right, is trying to get detransitioners. So that they can have people that are like represented from the trans community to like fear monger transitions, right? That's their like new thing because that right now, because it's not yet swung back to be cool to hate gay people in general. They're like, oh, trans, which is what Jeffrey's doing, is like a new enough public phenomenon that we can like hammer in on how much we hate them and it's acceptable in our niche, right? Or in our niche, our political alignment. So once the interviews started coming out, People were putting a clip where Jeffrey was talking about I being able to identify as whatever. And some could argue, and he, he could probably argue, oh, I was doing it to like sell makeup. But again, that wouldn't have even aligned of like any of Jeffrey's values, presence, sales tactics, or anything like that at the time. So once the interview starts cycling, like I said, Jeffrey Starr kind of went on Instagram stories and he really said, I can't be trans. <laughs> I can't be transphobic because I have five transgender employees. Jeffree Star, who has five transgender employees. Jeff How many employees does Jeffree Star Cosmetics have? 46 employees. So that's like less than 10%. That's a little more than 10% are trans. Which, like, I guess is, like, somewhat okay numbers. But, like, you know, I can't be racist because I have black friends has never been a good comeback. So maybe we rub our two brain cells together on this one. I'm not transphobic. I have trans employees, people who work for me. 
to help make me more money so I can explain. You know, this is going to be my little, um, my little, you know, leftist thing. But the I exploit the labor of trans people for my own profit. So how could I not like them? Because everything always has to come back to money. Like there's no like humanity with him, right? Which is like I'm dumbfounded. And can you tell? I've been doing a lot of like teaching stuff because I'm very like weirdly animated over things that like, you know, might not be worth being animated about. But since then, Jeffrey has retweeted the clip of him being like, I don't know, like non-binary people with this like end wokeness Twitter account. This is what I'm saying, right? We're planting the alt right seeds because he's now he's starting to respond and interact with those types of communities online. And then he they, the day before he retweeted a, a reply to this post he made of like it was just like Mr. Diva and someone was like you were literally like were the face of androgyny for a long time blah 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 so then this numb nuts replies you can be non-conforming without being an intention seeker and a bully so apparently just saying can you please call me that use they them pronouns for me is being an attention seeking bully okay uh, weapon of choice, pronouns. If you're truly conforming, you don't give a fuck about your pronoun, what your pronouns are. Conforming is being a they, them, zzer. It's a social contagion and the biggest pick me of our era. So there's also a difference between the neo pronouns and the like being non-binary. So even conflating those, you're obviously don't even like that in itself has just shown you don't know what you're talking about. But like no one's telling you that you have to have that. Right. And again, you it's not a if the way that it's made you so angry is a you problem. Like when you're raging about things that don't actually have anything to do with you really and are none of your fucking business, it's a you problem. Speak my facial hair. And do you wanna know why I have facial hair? Because I was born a male. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um the last week has been crazy a lot of things have been going viral on twitter and on um a lot of political instagram accounts no i'm not doing any more interviews bitch you'll see me on the next big podcast in a few weeks and when y'all see who i'm collabing with <laughs> oh bitch um it's nuts but hello everyone hope you're having a beautiful day i'm staring at all my amazing yaks out the window miss goddess oh my god yes we can we're about to have some crazy snow. So we're at Miss Thing, and look at that facial hair. Hi, it's getting male. Because something as simple as replacing the word she with they, because the way you, like, in academic writing, right, when you're referencing somebody or a paper or anything, you use they, them anyways a lot of the time or in any kind of, a lot of professional settings. So it's like, it's not like it hasn't been involved with language before. Right. So it's like. It's it's not like they them are like new words. These are like when the neo pronoun stuff is actually a separate thing, too, because that's not what's being talked about here. But like that's also more nuanced. And obviously people on Twitter, uh, especially are going to lack nuance because that's just the way that it is. But he also likes to say things like common sense is not so common anymore, despite the fact that like. It's pretty common sense to know that, like, the argument, um, I have black friends, that I can't be racist, is stupid. So then by deducing that to the same application, you could say that I, I have transgender. Because you didn't even say I had, the worst part is you didn't even say you had transgender friends. You said employees. <laughs> like, you could <laughs> you couldn't even, like, you couldn't even come up with, like, an actual, like, I can't, humanity. You couldn't come up with, like, a component of humanity for it. So you're like, oh, I exploit their labor. The voice of reason and has common sense. Not me, though. I just like. I wonder what reason he'd say I'd do this for cloud chasing. But like, if I was truly cloud chasing, I would be doing way more. I would have like way more social media posts. I would actually like put things out, you know, Um, I would like be interacting with. You know what I mean? Like I make the videos because it's like fun and it's like enough money to like I survive, you know? So, because I'm going to school because I actually like learning things and I like interacting with people and I like these kind of components of humanity as opposed to like everything just being income-based, right? Like, I don't believe that like monetary value and human and like humanistic value are the same, right? For example. But, you know, that's just me, I guess. So here's where we're going to conclude. I think most of this boils down to like 
Jeffree Star just trying to transcend again. And I think that's where we're going to be at for the time being. And I think I'm going to keep track with this and see what's been going on because I have a feeling I'm going to be right. Usually, like, I have some Oracle uh, moments here and there on the channel. I got the I got the gears going. I think it was, like, my Mia Soros video. I, like, predicted her comeback perfectly. It's been a couple times I've really served. But, you know, regardless, links, sources, Amazon, Patreon, ways to support the channel, all linked down below, uh, including any affiliate links or anything like that. Uh, email to suggest longer form content will also be there. I read the emails. I don't reply to them because I forget and I'm lazy. Anything else? Uh, feel free to comment down below. Sh like, share, subscribe, whatever. And my socials, like I said, are down below. And uh, you all have a great day. Squish Gang's looking extra fluffy today because my friend was here. She made the bed and she actually like does things well. Unlike me, I'm very lazy. So you all have a good day wherever you are, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Oh my God, Mac, you're amazing. You look like an amazing person to be friends with. I don't have a license.